Hi everyone, Maxon here. Welcome to my latest Master of Orion Let's Play using a full release version of the game, which has recently come out when I'm recording this. I have actually covered Master of Orion before on the channel, when it was back in early access. I've even done a guide video for it as well, so you may want to check it out, those out at some point. Uh, especially if you're really new to the game as well, because uh, I'm not going to be discussing a ton of basics in this Let's Play, but I will to a certain extent. Before I get started with a single player new game, I should mention the fact that uh, Mass of Orion is a reboot of the classic Mass of Orion game which was made well over a decade ago. Uh, Mass of Orion 1 and 2 were the best games in the series and uh, Mass of Orion 3 wasn't so great. But NGD Studios and WG Labs have done a really good job with this reboot in my opinion and I would definitely recommend it, especially to people who are new to the 4X genre, but I'll be mentioning why I would recommend the game during the course of the Let's Play. I should thank Wargaming.net as well. They originally gave me a copy of this game, so uh, the reboot. Uh, so I've been able to make content because of that. So I'd just like to thank them again. Right, let's get to starting a new game though. So single player and new game. The race I'm going to be playing as in this Let's Play are the Mechla. They are a cybernetic type of life form. And in fact, you can read this description here to learn more about them. They have a couple of traits. Uh, one is food consumption. They're half as much compared to other races. Their ships are auto repaired as well if they receive any damage within a turn. And they are industrialists. So they start with a physics technology. It doesn't actually mention what that gives you here. And they also get a bit of a production boost as well. There are, what, how many are there? 11 different races and also a custom race. Uh, that you can choose from. Uh, the reason I've gone for the Mechla is mainly because they have a nice food bonus. I believe the food bonus races within the game are probably the strongest. These are probably on the uh, strongest end of the races within the game. Some of these races aren't too good, like the Mershin are pretty crappy. There is a voiceover that's quite loud if I click on any of these. Which is a bit distracting. The blazing savannas of fear is gave there. right. Uh, all of the races have different traits and uh, yeah, some are definitely better than others, but I'll be discussing uh, which races are good and which are bad during the course of the Let's Play because we're going to be getting a certain amount of, uh, well, we're going to have seven random different races because I'm playing on a large galaxy size. So yeah, I'll be able to discuss most of them. So let's have a look on the game settings. What settings do I want? I think I'll stick with a circle one. Uh, there's these uh, warp travel points that can block off sections of the map with the other settings and I'm not really that fond of that so I keep with a circle galaxy type. Uh, we'll go for large, galaxy age determines uh, the type of planet so I'll just stick with a default. Uh, that's default as well. Uh, AI opponents, 7, that's a maximum for this map size. I'm going to keep on all of the defaults advanced settings and what else am I looking for? Difficulty level. Now since I've been getting reacquainted with the game I've actually been mainly playing on extreme and I found that the AI has been significantly improved. I'm not sure, well last time I played the game I don't believe it was an extreme difficulty level. I doubt that the AI actually does anything different between like uh, very hard and extreme. I imagine it's just uh, bonuses are even more uh, huge on extreme compared to very hard. I really am tempted to actually play on extreme but I haven't really been able to play up to a point where I uh, look like winning in the test games I've done so far. So I think I'm just going to stick on very hard but I'm going to be talking in many circumstances uh, how you would beat uh, the game on extreme. I'm going to be playing as if it's an extreme game for the most part basically. But I'll be mentioning all about that a bit later on. Right, there's a intro video coming up now and also there's an advisor which uh, talks for a bit. So I'm going to not say anything uh, during that and then I'll save the game and then actually get started. Uh, if you want to skip that, it's about a minute or two. Bolted onto the surface of Mechlon. The Mechlar Combine's main cycle ran endlessly through uncountable revolutions. In time, a relative order was established over the dizzying cacophony of individual thought. 
as it became an orderly blend of truncated individuality advancing the Combine's inscrutable objectives. This new, streamlined awareness came with a sudden realization, one that now turns the Mechlar towards the rest of the galaxy. There is still much to be optimized. Now interfacing with the Overseer of the Combine. The denomination is Advia OSM, Overseer Support Module. Advia's main task is to assist with data management and system administration in an unobtrusive and seamless manner. Okay, so let's pull out and see where exactly we are on this galactic map. Right, so we've connected to a couple of systems via the hyperlane or hyperwarp, I can't remember what they call these. Uh, you can only travel along these with your ship, so uh, yeah, it is, does restrict your movement, which some people don't like. Uh, the old um, Master of Orion uh, crowds, it didn't used to be the case in uh, Master of Orion 1 and 2, but I quite like it. It can create uh, bottlenecks and uh, defensible points, so yeah, I quite like that system. So, uh, you've got mail. Let's have a look at our starting ship. So we've got two scouts, colony ship and frigate, that's always the same. I'm going to send one scout up in that direction and one scout in that direction. And then I've got a decision where I, I'm going to want to send my colony ship and my frigate. Let's actually change the tax rate. You want to basically tax your population as much as possible. Uh, without causing too many strikes. If you cause strikes, then your population You've got mail. stops working and your output is reduced because of that. So if we stick it on 4 billion credits, that's going to be great in this circumstance. Research-wise, let's take a look in there. Please select a new upgrade. So we started with physics, didn't we, supposedly? So that is the automated factory, which is actually the tech I would go for first. That's particularly good tech to start with. Now I'm either going to want to pick up the research laboratory or the extra food, and it's quite a close decision, actually. Now, the tech tree in Massive Orion is a very linear tech tree, and you've got uh, all these icons to note something or other. For example, you can use this to highlight certain things, like production. Uh, these orange ones are production, for example. Uh, pollution. Is that uh, aqua greeny color and uh, what else is it? Defense if you wanted that. So there's all different types of things in the tech tree and I'll be discussing all of that later on. Right, so the first tech I'm going for I think is probably the research one. Right, or maybe the biology one. I don't know, it's really close actually to that decision. Uh, it depends probably on, um, yeah I think I'll go with the research. Right, so I think I'm going to send my colony ship off towards the Pindama system because there seems to be larger planets there that I may want to colonize. My actual strategy has changed quite a bit since my Terran Let's Play before. I would basically want to... I would recommend you not colonize in the sector next to you. Or at least that's what I would have done before. Now, my strategy has changed because the game is uh, a lot more difficult. The AI is a lot more aggressive. I tend to go for more of a turtle strategy now, especially if you're playing on extreme difficulty. Right, let's do our production now. First of all, let's show the queue. And I think we'll start in the automated factory here. With many races, I'd actually get scouts out first, but I might as well get the production up here. Exploring a lot is very important early on in Master of Orion. So I'll get that down to 5, uh, probably worthwhile. You can see all of these uh, numbers on here. That's the yield you get for sticking a population point there. So that's given us uh, 4 food. Uh, that one would only give us 3 food. Now with the Mechla, we're a bit different because of our traits. So you can see our population up here is 6, but in reality, because we get 50%, we only need 50% of food with the Mechla, the consumption is only 3, so that can mean that we can uh, grow more significantly quicker than other races. 
And production, we get an extra 25% boost as well. So you can see there, I'm getting a bit extra because of the racial trait. Right, so that factory One is alert unattended. getting built. And what's this? I'm going to keep the advisor on, but I don't need any advisor. But uh, you might be interested in reading it, perhaps. So, Right, uh, yeah, I think that's it for the first turn, so end of turn. Okay, let's get scouts up there. Oh. Scouts, I believe, are a tiny bit faster than uh, the other ships, maybe. So that's why I'm keeping them separate. Although, well, maybe they're not, actually. Uh, right, so that's done. Next turn. Right, so we can see that these two systems connect to various other systems. In fact, there's a wormhole quite near to us as well. So that wormhole, the exit point is going to be, well, on a large map, there are four wormholes. So it could be there, it could be there, or there. That could be a benefit to us, it could be a problem for us, depending on who happens to be at the end of one of these wormholes. Right, so where is my scout to? Let's separate him, we'll have him go to there, next turn, and let's, uh, in the turn, is it, because I think all the movement's done. Okay. Waggy is discovered. Um, I think I'll, don't really need to go to the wormhole yet, so I'll just go to there. And I want to find the AIs as quickly as possible, basically, uh, especially the ones near to me, because then I can plan where I want to colonize. The previous best strategy would be to basically to colonize quite far away from your starting home world, and then right next to an AI to prevent them from colonizing, and then backfill all the planets. But the AI now is a lot more aggressive, and if you do that strategy, they'll probably declare war on you, depending on the difficulty level on extreme. On extreme difficulty, they will definitely declare war on you. On very hard, um, it's probably a bit less the case, but still, um, yeah, it's probably not such a great idea. Uh, forward settling, that's the phrase that's generally used in the 4X games. Right, so I'm going to... There are pirates within the game, so I think I am actually going to take a risk here. I don't think there's any pirates here. I'm going to split up my uh, frigate and my colony ship and you should definitely escort colony ships a lot more now. Uh, the AI for the pirates didn't used to be all that good. Now, if you leave uh, a weak ship unattended, they will attack it if they are near it. Okay, wow. This is a sucky situation. Two gas giants within that system. I was really hoping that we find some good planets there. Uh, doesn't look like we're gonna have a good start here then. Uh, with the situation, there's a pirate ship there. Yeah, with the situation now, you really want good plants right next to you if you're gonna do a turtle type start. And uh, yeah, I just, uh, well, two gas giants aren't colonizable for a start, so that's not a great situation at all. I've got a scout there. Uh, let's bring you down. Uh, I'm gonna have to. Move the frigate there, I think. Display relevant information. That's an anomaly, which usually gives you some type of reward, but I can't really go for that yet because I need to protect my colony ship and uh, even scout a bit. This is small world, which is likely to be terrible. Uh, it has less uh, population tiles long term, so and in this case, it's actually volcanic as well, which can't be terraformed. Unless you happen to be the Chrysalon race, I believe it is. So, um, yeah, it's a particularly awful planet. So, yeah, we're getting a really shit start here, which is not good at all. Uh, right, so this is going to make this uh, very hard difficulty even harder. Uh, colony ship, normally detected. I think I'd better scout some of these then, since I'm probably going to have to colonize these worlds up here, one of them. That's not too bad actually, that's definitely worth colonizing. But it's only medium. So I would, uh, well, what you're looking for is uh, the biggest of sizes, the best of biomes, and the best mineral with a 
normal gravity and some sort of bonus resource. But uh, yeah, certainly don't have that on this start. Right, let's end the turn. Maybe I can adjust this a bit actually. Probably should have done that last turn. I'll boost the science a bit. Gonna get scouts out then. Right, let's get moving. I may have to colonize this volcanic planet at some point just to lock down that system. Maybe important to do so, but uh, yeah, it's really sucky situation that is. Right, so the factory is built. Let's start on a scout. Definitely need to find people, so let's get them out. Uh, right. Have it done in a couple of turns. That scout can go there. So is that world any good? It's 233 and it's got artifacts, which I believe it might be a research bonus, a couple of points, something like that. I think that's slightly better because of the biome. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is actually bring my colony ship back up there. And uh, yeah, I think we're in for a tough game for a very hard difficulty here based on circumstances so far, which uh, yeah, could be good. Right, uh, that can wait there until the pirate gets in and I'll destroy it. And let's end the turn. Right, so we've got a couple of pirate raiders and we get our ch first chance to see some combat. So I'm going to actually take command here so we can see combat in action. So you get a bit of a cinematic plays and combat is real time with pause and you can speed things up here so the pirates are over there and uh, let's get on pause here so our ship there's various options that denotes well if I hold that you can see ships are try to keep enemies within these ranges that's the speed the throttle there are your weapons there and they are closing, so I'm going to press that and then press hold. Now this has missiles, so I want to keep them at long range. And also, they have some weapons which are very close range, I believe. Uh, well, destroyed already. So where is it? It's 25 range, that one is. So I want to keep it at long range so we can't use that, basically. And you never got to use it. Pirates... Uh, very easy to kill, they're never really a threat as long as uh, you escort things like colony ships. They're not going to take down any decent ship. Right, so that, I think this colony ship should be safe. So I'm going to actually move that to pick up the anomaly. I can move up there. And that scout can keep on exploring. It's not much point in looking at these planets because I'm not going to be colonizing them anytime soon. I'd rather find people. Uh, this scout, let's have him. I assume that wormhole station will connect to there. It's highly likely, or that connects to there. The warp lines or lanes can't. Uh, bisect each other, they can't go over each other. So that's uh, one way you can figure out what system is connected to what, basically. Uh, it's quite important. Or it can be. I'll bring a scout down here. This is, it looks like a small system, so there's unlikely to be many planets here. Let's uh, end the turn. Okay. The anomaly turns out to be a derelict ship, floating eerily so empty forget? with no signs of its former crew. That. And found another system. I think I'll get one more scout out because with a large map we probably need a couple of scouts. And then I'll get started on a space factory. You can actually stick things in the list. In general I'm going to discuss things when... Uh, 
becomes important as well. Like I don't really need to discuss certain things like pollution yet, but I will be at some point. Uh, right, so two turns. Yeah, I think that's okay. Right, let's bring that scout down there. There's pirates there. There's a high chance I'm going to lose that scout. As soon as it gets into the system, they'll probably attack it. It happens sometimes. Uh, you never know where pirates are going to be. So. But I have, well, soon to have four scouts. So, uh, yeah. They will make up for losing one. Let's bring that there. And then the turn. You can see my money's building up. I will be spending that, but I'm actually going to wait until I've colonized the planet. I want to spend it on getting the initial uh, colonized planet up and running, the first one I colonize. It's actually very time consuming to get planets up. What you want it to be in earlier access versions. I am the President of the Human Republic. May the cooperation between our races be ever fruitful. Okay, so we've met our first alien species if you can call the humans aliens uh, right so I'm gonna say it's goodbye to him for now currently there's not really any diplomatic interactions that I can hello friend do with him but later Speak on mind, we'll be able friend. to when I can get things like embassies in fact I want to get farewell embassies friend rather quickly and much more quickly than I would have uh, done so in previous early access versions of the game pre-release it's that pirate's going up there, which is lucky for me. It looks like I'm going to get away with that situation. I want to scout as much as I want to find the races, other races as quickly as possible. I also want to scout near to me, so I'll probably bring that up there in a second. Uh, right, let's end the turn. One unread notification. Okay, that's telling me to build a factory, and in fact, I've actually started on that, so, uh, yeah, one step ahead of the advisor. complete. The combine has been successfully upgraded. You can now build a research laboratory and also a government support facility, which gives extra morale and security. There is espionage in the game. A lot of 4X games these days don't actually have espionage. Uh, like Galactic Civilization 3, like Stellaris, for example. So, Massive Orion is a bit of a rarity. Uh, right, so next technology. Let's go and pick up the foods. I'm sure those games will add it eventually in a DLC or expansion. Uh, right, so scouts. Uh, right, so we're on to that. So I think, do I want to get it done a bit quicker? Probably do, so I've got an extra guy there. Colony ship can move up there. Um, I sent, yeah, let's send this scout down this way, I think. And I've actually got two frigates now. I'm going to bring those back up to protect my planets. But I had just in case pirates pay them a visit at some point. Uh, let's move to there. I've discovered a system there. This scout, yeah, let's come back up there. Over there. Okay, next turn. Welcome, stranger. I am the Empress of the Mershon Pride. If you scratch our backs, we'll scratch yours. Okay, so we found the Mershons. They are very militaristic. You can actually see their traits here. I think this was added at some point and wasn't in the very early version of the game, early access versions. See the human traits as well. So the humans are very diplomatically related, a lot of diplomatic bonuses. The Mercians are very militaristic bonuses they have, mainly uh, ground combat, which is next to worthless actually. The Mercians could do with a bit of a boost, they're not very good traits at all. Okay, the colony ship nearly reached there. Not quite, I think I'll bring that scout over there. Put 
account there. The if there's a planet within your starting system, it's always a gas giant. Sometimes you have asteroids, so that's why I haven't bothered to explore that. I'll be getting the uh, automated factory, which I'm making now over there very shortly. Discovered Unar. And that can come down to there. Okay, next turn. Okay, so which one of these is better? That's a 233. That's 243. Um, those artifacts aren't quite enough to make up for the better biome, so a slightly better food the other one is. So, 332. Three. Yeah, I'm going to colonize that one. Okay. There's a short Overseer. video. This one has data to share. Which plays now. I'm going to be quiet while that is in action. Okay, we don't have enough money yet to actually buy something. Uh, each production point is costs the equivalent of eight credits, I believe, to uh, outright buy it in one go. So that would be like 400 costs, as you can see here, 400. Yeah, so I'm not going to be able to do that. And I don't have enough food here, so I actually need to uh, keep that on that food tile, it would seem. So that's what I'm saving up for now, to buy that factory. Right, let's end the turn. You've got mail. Space factory is finished. Let's get that to the gas giants. You can, with these space factories, you can upgrade, make things on gas giants, uh, like the super scalar gas harvester for extra credits, or an asteroid to get science on money. And you can make uh, sensors and also outposts, military outposts, which I'm definitely going to be making around here soon to prevent anyone from entering the system uh, from that wormhole or perhaps uh, from those two directions. Uh, right, so that's done. Let's press that to get that moving. Uh, what do I want to make here next? Uh, let's get the lab up and going. Okay, so we uh, could do getting the food at some point, but um, yeah, I think that's okay for the time being. Leaving it like that. Uh, this can come down here. Right. And that can move to there. That scouts over there. Right next turn. Can't remember if I've been there or not. You only it's only revealed the lanes when you actually move into a system. So it's important to actually do so. In uh uh, if you want to know where the system connects to, at least. Which I do in most circumstances. Right, it's one turn, the lab is done. It's still saving up for buildings. I'm not sure Welcome yet if I want to oh, GNN. You are tuned to GNN, the only network that tells you what you need to know. Bringing it to you live. Galactic News Network, the galaxy's most reputable news source. Okay, so they just are a couple of robots to keep you up to date on events going on in the galaxy. Uh, how, well, if uh, certain events happen, like plagues or uh, supernovas, or letting you know how well certain empires are doing. 
Uh, what next here then? Right, I've just finished the lab. But you know what? At this point, I think I'm going to call it the end of this first video. So to be honest, I wouldn't exactly say we've got a great start here. The starting planets near to us are pretty average at uh, best, I'd say here. But uh, yeah, it's going to be hopefully make for a very hard game, which should probably be better for the Let's Play. So I hope you enjoyed this first video of my latest Master of Orion Let's Play. And if you did, uh, please consider giving this video a like. I'm really grateful to those of you who do that. Not only do more likes encourage me to make more content like this, but they also help boost my videos in YouTube search rankings, which is really very, very important to channels like mine because if my content can't get found, then it doesn't get watched. And uh, yeah, it's very, very important for videos to get likes and comments and uh, interaction in that way basically to help boost them in the search rankings so really very grateful to you if you give the video a like or share it or anything along those lines if you have any comments or questions about this let's play series please use the comment section I respond to questions no matter how old a video is and if you want to see more content like this please consider subscribing to the channel as well there's tons more content that I've already covered on the channel that you may be interested in Please check out the homepage or my playlists. And I'm also going to be covering future content that you may be interested in later on this year, like Civilization VI, uh, Stellaris, when the future patches and DLC and expansion comes out for that, Endless Space 2, and I might do some more Master of Orion as well if this Let's Play does well. Uh, before I go, I should also mention that I have a Patreon page. Patreon is a company that helps facilitate uh, supporting channels like my own. Uh, basically, uh, you can make a donation via Patreon uh, if you want to help my channel, uh, whether small or large, one-off or more usual, once every month. Uh, channels like my own really rely these days much more on Patreon than ever because the ad revenue coming in is getting lesser and lesser all the time. So if you do decide you want to help support the channel, if you want to see content like this for years to come, please check out my Patreon page. And uh, yeah, have a look at that. And if you fancy uh, supporting the channel, that would be absolutely amazing. And I'd just like to thank my existing patrons as well. Uh, without them, my channel just wouldn't uh, be able to continue. So thank you, patrons. Right, that's it for this video. So please check out the next one. And if you do, I'll see you then.